Blue Turn? Durgan. Durgan. Good evening, and thank you, and you're even looking wide awake. Once in a while I've seen a head go down, and I wondered, but then I, I trusted that they were reading. Um, okay, I am Jean Eileen Durgan Clinchard, and I am a member of parents, families, and friends of lesbians and gays. I was the first president in Lincoln, and the group grew when the 1981-82 referendum came about. And I, I have four children. My eldest son was gay. I lost him in 1999. Uh, his partner, he and his partner, had been together for 14 years. Um, this, today, I have heard. I've been here since uh, early on. Anyway, not quite at the beginning. And I've heard more compressed into this length of time, and it's seemingly coming at me. Um, than I have heard over all the years. Much of it was the same stuff. It's much of it the same, supportive and, and otherwise. I, I, it's very difficult for me to put down because it seemed to me if you had point by point by point, I could answer because I've heard all of them all the way through with the exception of a couple. I think Mr. Ford's and Ms. Woda's were a little bit different. And one of the things that I wanted to be sure to say, and, and it's a good thing I wrote it down, is, one of the people referred to one of the things that make the United States great. And I think one of the things that make the United States great is a city council like you that is willing to propose, study, listen in an open forum, and then act to do the right thing. I support, certainly, the amendment, as you can tell by my tag here. Um, I support the, amend the religious amendment and, and the, the ordinance in particular. Uh, it's, I think it's really important that the religious institutions feel that they can live without fear. I heard so much fear today. That was just astounding to me that there was so much fear in terms of religion. But I also heard other people, other religious groups. So you have, you know, not just two camps, but many camps. Uh, I heard a lot about practices, uh, homosexual practices. Um, and I guess I would say very bluntly, that the same practices that occur in the homosexual, the LBGTQ community, occur in the heterosexual community. They're the same kinds of practices. And I made a list of some of them. I'm talking sexuality, yes, but not just sexuality. We're talking about monogamy. We're talking about love, caring, responsibility, paying taxes, mowing your lawn, obtaining a mortgage, uh, private expressions of loving and caring, working for a living, and choosing to fight for your country. My son was a veteran. Uh, he served during the, he was not in Vietnam, but he served during the Vietnam conflict. His partner, as I said, of 14 years, served in the Navy. Uh, it was a loving relationship. And I, uh, one of the things that struck me too, was that there were people who were fearful about their children. I have two grand, well, I actually have, of the four children, I have five grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. And as I say, I did live through the 81, 82 referendum, so there was that fight. But my 15-year-old grandchild and my eight-year-old grandson live here in Lincoln. I want them not to be perpetrators, not to be bystanders. I want them to be loving people who know that gay and lesbian issues, you know, hey, this is what life's about. This is part of everybody's life. They know they have had a gay uncle. My granddaughter uh, doesn't, she was only two when he died, so she doesn't actually remember him, but there's pictures of her with him. Um, and, and I'll tell you one more story. During. And I, I do want to, yes, I want to finish this story, though, because uh, in 1981 or two, whatever it was, I was not living in Lincoln. I've lived here since 84. But I did commute here, going to school, and I stopped at a beauty parlor to get my hair cut. It was a little beauty parlor on the way out of town, going back to Grand Island. And what it was like a steel magnolia, if you ever remember the, hearing that movie, a small one. And I heard the people there talking. It was the day of the referendum. And I heard them saying all kinds of negative things. And at that point in time, I had not come out as, a, as the parent of a gay person because parents tend to go into closets when their sons come, or daughters come out. 
But I heard them talking. I thought, I can't, I can't just here listen to this. I can't just keep quiet and hear it. Because they were saying things like some of the things that you've heard today. And finally I said, well, I guess, and there were about five people there and two beauticians, one owner. And I said, I guess you people are probably glad that I don't live here because I would have voted um, in support of the ordinance. You could have heard a pin drop. It was just... It was just amazing. I didn't say I had a gay son. I just said I, I would have voted for it. Then the owner, and this is when we talk about business, this woman's business was these people that came regularly to her. And she said, well, I have a cousin who's gay and lesbian, and she babysits for my children all the time. And it just shifted like that. It was the recognition that there was somebody yeah, a face, a person. And you've heard some real people here today, both on the fearful side and on the willing to stand up side. And I thank you for your time and your wakefulness. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to make some introductory comments based on what I've heard uh, today. Uh, questions or confusions about the religious institutions and civil rights. I have about uh, 50 years, yes, I'm older than I look, um, <laughs> uh, dealing with disability rights and other civil rights kinds of issues. And as Nancy Erickson mentioned with the Americans with Disabilities Act, uh, that uh, the churches are the ones who uh, force this issue. And in a spirit of compromise, uh, it was determined that church-controlled entities were exempt from the law. Church-sponsored were included in the coverage. So church-controlled or church-sponsored uh, was a distinction that was made and has been workable. Uh, of course, uh, people of faith, uh, regardless of their faith, are not exempt from being disabled or for uh, from being uh, of uh, a different sexual orientation than myself. Uh, another point that has been brought up is in the 1960s there was a uh, public vote on uh, civil rights. Uh, I think that was about the last time we did that. I may be wrong, uh, but as we have grown as a society, we have learned that civil rights and human rights are not a matter for uh, public opinion and a vote. Uh, the bathroom issue has always come up. It came up with the uh, Equal Rights Amendment. Oh my God, men and women were going to have to use the same bathroom. It came up with the disability uh, law, and now it's come up again. There are, uh, there's kind of a pattern uh, with uh, these things. Um, that, and there are various diversions and contrived controversies and confusions and fears. But what happens with uh, human rights law or civil rights, we must deal with facts and the common good. And stigma and fears, uh, assumptions, presumptions, stereotypes and biases are not a basis for sound public policy and would be found uh, to be illegal when decisions are made on those bases. I heard some outdated information and um, some overwrought fears. Uh, with ADA, the fear of litigation uh, did not uh, become realized. If you want to verify that, check on the Job Accommodation Network, J-A-N. Uh, they have uh, a whole continuum of uh, experience. Um, this is, uh, I've, I've heard uh, false equivalencies, discredited research, uh, uh, perverse reasoning. Uh, I do not understand how this could be uh, a, a religious freedom issue. 
I feel like today I have been uh, bombarded with a particular brand of religion that I don't identify with trying to insert itself into public policy. Um, so one dis indisputable fact about all of us in this is we are all human. We are all equally human. Rich or poor, urban, rural, or frontier, in the Philippines, Nebraska, or the Middle East, we are all equally human. We have belly buttons, we all had a mother. While we all have different life experiences, we all have feelings too. What you know is love, hurt, embarrassment, and joy, and all the other emotions comes from your experience. My experience is different from yours, but, and you are living your life, I'm living mine, but our, uh, we are equally human and we all, all know what fear, disrespect, exclusion, or fairness feels like. Modern attitudes and information about sexuality has been informed by research and especially by personal life experience. We ought to accept this new knowledge to inform public policy. If one's beliefs say God is love or if anyone has sung Jesus loves the little children, how can they also rationalize their discriminatory attitude? Personally, I do not understand how any religious text can be used to sanctify discrimination, rejection, harassment, or harm. Finally, it is absurd that in the 21st century, we are still parceling out human rights group by group. Okay, your time is up. One more sentence. Quick, very quickly. Public officials are to serve all the people. I support the passage of this proposed addition of sexual orientation and gender identity to the non-discrimination policy of League of Nebraska. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker, it's a hyphenated name, Jean Eileen Dugan.